this data came from one of the classes that I teach. Uh, this is the three exams um, grade uh, from student one, two, three, four, and so on. So exam grade for um, exam one was 93%, that is student one got. And then if you look at this uh, student number nine, he's like super awesome. And student number eight, he was just kind of failing the exam. So I have created a control chart um, just because it looks like a subgroup type of data. So I have created control chart for subgroup using Minitab. Check my other videos on how to create those. So this is what I have got. Now you can see that most of these points are out of control. So what do I do? Um, do I delete all of them? Uh, and there is no specific reason that these points are out of control. So I cannot really delete them. So what kind of um, check that video says why, when you have to use um, IMR individual charts. So in this, this data is um, more appropriate. So each of these students have more individual uh, strong characteristics um, within themselves than the between students. So if you look at student eight and nine, they're consistent within themselves, but not necessarily uh, between the uh, nine and uh, eight. So if a student doesn't do well, he doesn't do well in next exam, next exam, and so on. A student do well in the first exam, typically they do well in all the exams. So in that kind of situation, these are more individual um, dominant data uh, than the actual the group uh, characteristics. So if I do the actual, the uh, let me show you the appropriate chart for that. So then you do the chart like this, something called um, individual moving range chart based on chart. Um, based on, it's still based on range, but it's for individual moving range. Now, if you, if you kind of go inside these two charts, um, when you collect, calculated this upper control line, which was calculated as X bar bar plus three sigma, and this lower control line was calculated as lower control line was x bar bar minus 3 sigma. This sigma in fact was within um, within the subgroup. So the sigma used in this case was um, this sigma. So this was calculated this um, on this student on this student and then there was the average taken for this. So, um, so this uh, sigma is within uh, student variation. On the other hand, this between within analysis or individual moving chart is created, still created based on x plus three sigma. However, this sigma is the overall sigma, overall sigma, which is the um, between a student in this case between subgroup and within subgroup so total sigma that's how this was um, calculated and that's why you have this broader um, um, control line then it falls everybody falls in within the control lines if I if I show you oops I got all this stuff here hopefully I can delete all of them so if you look at this um, sigma values uh, so this is the between students or uh, overall sigma and then the within sigma was come on within sigma is 5.11 so when this um, x bar r control chart was created based on the within sigma it was used 5 it used 5 and then when we created this individual chart it was used uh, this uh, sigma so as you can see that if this is the most appropriate uh, graph then when you calculate the CP value you should use the uh, overall uh, sigma in this case so this is the uh, CP using the um, 
using the within sigma which you have done for x bar r control chart or x bar s control chart but for individual chart you should use the overall um, uh, sigma so i can say this is for the x bar r control or x bar s control or s control chart same thing this tells exactly the same thing now then this one is more for the imr chart however when you calculate within cp it tells something about this process if you look at these uh, different students um, I'm doing okay job when it comes to a particular student because he's consistent between the exam he's doing okay maybe the student is coming with an expectation of C um, he or she is just happy to get a C and in that sense that's okay now if a student is coming with hungry type of mentality uh, never satisfied want to get more and more want to learn more look at this student number nine which uh, is getting almost 100%, over 100%, sometimes all the extra credit points they get too. So this student is getting um, A plus or A. So his or her expectation is to get the best uh, grade from this. And, and they are consistent. So um, this within CP tells something that um, I'm doing a okay job when it comes to a particular student, but overall as an instructor my goal is to uh, Teach everybody quality and bring everybody to a point where everybody learned this material quality control and and basically learn 100% from this class um, So if I want to if that is my goal, then I'll be talking about more of this CP value which is um, 0.31 which is very very low now, i would like to mention also and to discuss something more here so if you look at the cp formula which is upper spec limit minus lower spec limit divided by six sigma so upper specification in this case 90 lower specification 60 i cannot really change that the university has this standard that 60% is a pass, 90% is a A. I, can, I have to be within that, that range. So in a lot of times also in a, in a process industry, you can't really change that spec limit. That's what your customer wants and you have to deliver that. So how can I improve my CP value? If the only way I can work on is this sigma, this variability between a student. So one of the thing I have done for this class to create this lecture series this video series so if a student needs more time they can practice watch the video again and again and kind of prepare to that level um, satisfactory performance level um, so you could you could reduce this variability in 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 so many ways so uh, that's one of the things i can do um, just to provide maybe more office hour for the student who needs help things like that so i can i can reduce this variability or decrease this variability so in this equation because it's divided by sigma if i decrease this sigma my cp value will increase and every student will be happy so if i can reach a cp value of 1.3 which is the recommended value every student will be very very happy now the question is do i really want that that every student is happy they love me do I really want that um, in my teaching philosophy I believe that if it doesn't hurt your brain you're not learning anything you're just wasting your time so um, the more you learn I'll probably push more so I'll never achieve this CP value just a thought some people disagree with me uh, but that's what I believe in teaching if you want to build your muscle you have to tear them up and they always build up better than the original same thing for your brain you want to build it you have to tear it up you have to feel the stretch you have to feel the pain to kind of develop anyway i'm going kind of out of track so that's it about the analysis cp calculation 
for individual moving chart so you have to use the between variability this piece not the within for individual moving chart how about x bar r control chart you use within uh, so that's the difference between these two